This is Jackie, and I'm here with Josh and Paul of Silverstein. We're here at Baltimore Soundstage. Welcome. Welcome to the little, I don't know what this area is that we're backstage. It's, it's like a back like it's dead hallway. Storage right now. Yeah, they're storing a lot of cases back here. It's no place for people, but it's where we find ourselves. It's good enough for us. It's good enough for us. It's going to work. Last time I had the pleasure of talking to Silverstein was at Warped Tour and the APMAs last summer. It feels almost like summer now. Uh, I think I talked to Shane just, I think, the day Dead Reflection came out. July 14th? Pittsburgh. Came out really good memory. Pittsburgh. Yeah. All right, then it wasn't because it was Virginia Beach. Yeah, so maybe it was close. like the day, yeah, maybe it was the day before then, yeah. definitely in the Northeast. Anyway, we, we sort of, we talked a little bit about the record, but we couldn't talk about too much of it because it wasn't all, I wasn't out, um, out there too much. Um, but how has the new album been received live now that you guys are playing it? Oh, I think it's been received very well. We're playing a bunch of the new tunes and people seem to be going wild for them. <laughs> Absolutely wild. So wild. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best response I've ever gotten. Yeah. Um, so what are some songs that on Dead Reflection that you haven't played live that maybe you plan to soon? What, what, what do you want to throw in the mix? I think we were talking Mirror Box was one that we were going to start dropping in maybe, but definitely no plans to do that on this current tour. Yeah. And not tonight. Not tonight. <laughs> no, but we are playing five. We're doing five. We're five doing from a... the album, which is a lot. That's, yeah. you know pretty much half the album. So. We're, we're trying our best to like showcase it for people without beating them over the heads with it. You know, We got a lot of old records, and we still try and mix it up and play tunes from them. But uh, We are playing a song from every album. That's true. That's awesome. At least one. Wait, I was going to say, with such a huge discography, how do you go about choosing a set list f- for a tour? Bingo. Darts. Hockey. <laughs> yeah. We, we play <laughs> games. Now, we, we kind of take a look at kind of what we have played over the years, and... If we've kind of played a song too much, we maybe tuck it away for a bit and pull out something different that uh, will hopefully entice people to come and rock out with us. Especially soon. Any uh, plans for new music videos for Dead Reflection? You got any plans? I don't have any personal plans, no. <laughs> if, some, if someone wants to call me up and say we're doing one, I'll be there. But no, we haven't talked about it. Not really. We, uh, we've made a few for this record, and... Making music videos is uh, not, not cheap. Th- not oh. cheap, not fun. <laughs> not particularly fun. D- does anyone even watch them anymore either? It just feels like something you have to do, so we do it. We, do, we try and put a lot of care into it, but man, is it ever a big endeavor. Speaking of a big endeavor, uh, every time your album comes out, you do several thousand pressings of vinyl. What are the benefits of putting out vinyl when music streaming is so ubiquitous? I mean, people still collect, right? So, um, and we like it. And so there's been a huge resurgence in vinyl, I think, because it's eminently collectible. It's more collectible than CDs. It's more fun. The art's bigger. You can just do more rare, cool stuff. Um, I think making CDs is stupid. (laughs) Like, who's using them? We still make them. Your computer doesn't even have a slot to put the CD in anymore. I literally do not have a CD player in anything I own. Oh, my car, I guess, has one. There you go. But, like, I got Spotify in there. Actually, I just switched to Apple Music. What's that? <laughs> I just, just killed my Spotify account. See ya. Aww. It's because Josh and I got the Apple Watch. You can see here we both got it. Oh, same day. You're band buddies. Look yeah. at that. Yep, yep. And Apple Music works on the watch, Spotify, not so much. So you heard it here first. If you're thinking about getting an Apple Watch and you have Spotify, don't. <laughs> don't do one of those things. <laughs> you one of those. Yeah. All right. You guys have played Warp Tour at least five times, five different years. Oh, seven, Six? Seven, really? Yeah. Oh, man, someone's got to update a website. All good. How has playing Warp Tour helped shape your band's career? It's given us nice tans. <laughs> 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 Made us sweat a lot. Um, I, think, I think in the early days when we first got on it, it was a big accomplishment. We all grew up going to see that show, um, and it felt really cool to be a part of it. And it definitely gets you in front of a lot of different people, or at least gives you the opportunity to. Uh, and it, I think, worked out well for us and kind of helped build a, a solid fan base early on. And now we just do it because we like to sweat. I don't really know why we do it, to be honest. We, <laughs> we just keep doing it. Here we go. Yeah. Like, Would you do it again for the last time around? Oh, I don't think we're going to be able to. We're going to be in Europe so much. Well, so. If, if you happen to come back east... Who would be on your would love to see playlist? Oh, mercy. I mean, some of the classics. I always enjoy seeing no effects there, you know. Mm, okay. You're a big fan of the ska music. I do like the ska music, yeah. If they put a couple of like, less than Jake's or real big fishes on it, I'd, uh, 
I'd get in the pit and skank, you know? Google it, kids. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's called skanking. It used to be really fun, yeah. and now it's not that fun. Yeah. It's just, last time I skanked was in Boise, Idaho. If only there was like a... There was a sentence. <laughs> I know. The last... I know. I can't. You were there, one, skanking. Was that when we went to see... Uh, Oh, what was that we band? Madness? S- no, I don't think it was that. We accidentally saw a ska band. We also accidentally saw Jimmy Eat World that day. It was a weird day. Very accidental day. He walked onto our bus thinking it was his bus. And we were like, no, but why are you here? And okay. we found out they were playing, so we went to the show. It was cool. Man, Idaho's a really weird place. It's yep. true. It's true. Man. So your website mentions, uh, it has a post that mentions that you have performed over 2,100 live shows. What sucker drew, drew the small straw and had to tally that? Bill. <laughs> I love that. But he loves it. So he absolutely loves it. Okay. He loves okay. counting stuff up. He like gave everyone personalized lists, like everyone in the crew. He was like, Danny, our tour manager, your 500th show, Las Vegas on this tour. Get you a cake. Did we get him a cake? No. No cake. Maybe we- in Boise. Maybe. You never know. <laughs> Uh, you, you guys, ha- your live show, how has it evolved over those years? You guys have been a band for 18 years. We're not going to cut you open and count the rings. Just trust me on that one. <laughs> it's certainly harder to choose a set, you know, because we have over 120 songs at this point. So how do you distill that down to 20 or so? No matter what, you're making someone sad. But is that the goal of our music? Perhaps. <laughs> wow. Emo. Ooh. Um... Yeah, uh, I think we keep getting better at performing and refining what we do up there. I would hope so. We've been doing it so long. Oof. 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 So how do you guys measure success in 2018 where music streaming seems to sort of trump album sales? Money. What's success? We want tons of money. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have no idea. How do we? Apple Watches. I don't Apple think, watches. yeah. Oh, there's an app for that for sure. Yeah. It, it's tricky, you know? Um, definitely records sell less and less, but we're still able to go on tour and have a lot of people come out to the show and sing along. Uh, and I think it's really cool that we have older fans that have grown up with us, uh, but we also have younger fans coming out to the shows that are younger than, at times, some of our records. So uh, I, I count that as a big feather in our collective cap got one big hat and there's a huge feather sticking and out. That's a totally young and understandable expression. I yeah. think that. Oh, I'm really <laughs> doing well here. I'm hip. <laughs> we are so with it. Yeah. <laughs> Something that you guys have done for many years is you've been involved with different charities and social causes. Are there any that you're working with right now or would like to in the near future? I don't think we have uh, gotten involved with a social cause lately. I think the interesting thing about the internet is, like, it's so easy to um, so sort of, like, pledge your allegiance to various, like, causes and, you know, types of activism that you may represent or like to. Um, so it's almost like, yeah, I feel, I feel less compelled to dive in as a band and more, more compelled to just act as an independent. Yeah. Like, I know we're all marching with the Women's March. Mm-hmm. I know we're all talking a lot of shit to Donald Trump on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> I went out for the People's Environment Climate March, whatever. Yeah. You know, I think, yeah, we're all just kind of finding our own ways to try and leave our mark on the world and hopefully leave it a better place. Certainly a lot of stuff going on worth putting putting your two cents in for. Certainly. So I mean, I, yeah, I think we are not pulling any punches. We're, we're having our opinions be heard. Whether or not that is effective activism or not, I don't know. But we have some people looking at us and listening to us. So if we can at least get our feels out there and they can see how they feel about them and see where that goes. I think that's a good use of a platform. So this is probably my fourth or fifth Silverstein interview. I've lost track. One question I've never asked before and I find it really shocking. What is your favorite Shel Silverstein book? No pressure. Sophie's Choice. I mean, probably where the sidewalk ends. I feel like it's the first one I was acquainted with and so, you know... You always remember your first. I was like, I can't believe I really have never asked. The English teacher has never asked the book question. Sorry. I had to. It's about time. If you would like, I have a Shel Silverstein poem on tap here. Maybe. (laughs) Okay. I think it's called The Voice. We'll see if I can get through this. There is a voice inside of you that whispers all day long. I know that this is right for me. I know that that is wrong. 
No parent, teacher, preacher, friend, or other can decide what's right for you. Just listen to the voice that speaks inside. We're going to leave it at that. Check out much more from Silverstein. This is Jackie. Thanks to Chorus FM and In the Key of Change.